So on a previous video, um, or a couple of videos, I've gone through these PC engines, APU2 systems. They're great for running as a small PBX. Um, in this case, we were using it for PFSense. So the first video I went through and showed you how to put them together. Uh, the second one we went through and we actually got PFSense installed on them, which this is still at that same state. Um, I did label the LAN and WAN ports on them. So I figured, you know, we should uh, actually do a video and finalize the settings for what you need to do um, with relation to the APU2 board. So without delay, let's log in and have a look. The uh, default username for PFSense is admin. Um, password is PFSense. You'll be prompted with the wizard. So let's quickly go through the wizard and get that set up. Um, quick notification showing you that support is available. Um, okay, general information, host name. So you can set this to, you know, gateway, uh, Dot your domain dot com, um, whatever you prefer to set that as. But for this demo, I'm just going to leave them set to the default. Um, primary DNS servers, again, um, it's down to your preference on what you want to use. You can use Google, you know, 8.8.8.8, uh, 1.1.1.1 servers. Uh, I prefer to use uh, OpenDNS. So let's go ahead, go ahead and add them in. 67, 222, Two oh eight sixty seven two two zero two two zero. Uh allow override DNS. Uh, again this is up to you. Uh when PF sense connects to the internet it can get the DNS servers, pass to it from the ISP and overwrite them. Um I don't want to do that in this case, I want to use the open DNS servers. And go ahead and you know tell it where we are, set the time zone. Uh, where am I? I'm in London, 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 so that's London. Uh, one, so out of the box, PFSense is set to DHCP for the one. Um, you know, you can change this to static if need be. You'll need to change this to your own requirements. Um, I'm going to use DHCP for this case. It's just the way I've got it set up for this demo, so it will work. Um, is there anything else I need to change in there? These generally wouldn't change um, on the one interface because you want, you know, anything coming from private addresses that's entering the box on the one you do want blocked. I'm just unblocking them for this demo um, just because my one interface, the DHCP address it'll get is going to be a private address just for this demo. Um, but generally, you want these ticked. Uh, LAN IP address. The default is 192.168.1.1. Yeah, you can change this to suit your needs. Uh, and the subnet mask 24.255.255.255.0. Admin password. And that should be in this little configuration done. There we go. Recommend that you check for updates. Um, this should be pretty not up to date, but let's finish that. Uh, this warning will appear. Um, we're not using uh, PFSense hardware for this. Um, and because it's on our own, you, you basically can't put it on eBay and sell it that way. Um, so accept the notice. Um, Right, so you know you've got the support things, um, community and paid support that you can subscribe to. The status, DNS servers that we've set up. As you can see, this box is using very little CPU, very little memory. And granted, it isn't actually doing anything at the moment. Um, our one address, the LAN address. I'd say, as I did say, our is is going to be. Um, the private address just because of the way I've got it set up at the moment. So there are a couple of things that we need to do. Advanced. Um, we can leave that set to HTTPS. Uh, you can change the ports if you want to. Um, enable secure shell. If you want to be able to SSH into your box you need to add this. Um, you can also set the console speed. 
Uh, one of the things that I like to do is to p password protect the console menu. Basically to stop people sticking a serial cable into it and jumping in doing things they shouldn't be doing. A firewall and NAT. This isn't a deep dive, so I'm not really going to go into this for the um, time being. But you can leave that, you know, there's nothing you need to change out of the box to be able to get on the internet. Um, networking. Allow IPv6. Now, I'm not using IPv6 here, and I do want to disable it. Again, that's personal preference to you on whether you're using IPv6 or not. Uh, miscellaneous again most of this you can leave enable power d depends on the hardware you're running uh, apu2 doesn't support it really so you can just leave that as it is cryptographic and thermal hardware the apu2 does support hardware encryption and it's aes so we can set that um yeah that's good for there nothing we really need to change in there to get started uh, general setup this was filled out from the wizard um, so there's nothing we really need to change in there um, yeah let's go ahead and change the theme I prefer the dark theme for, PS, for PFSense um, Say update manager, check it's up to date. Um, we are on the latest version, up to date. Interfaces, assignments. So, as you can see, we have the one assigned to IGB2, we have the LAN on IGB0. Uh, on this box, we also have a third network interface, which is the one in the middle, as we've configured it. Um, opt one. So let's go ahead add that. Um, that's a pretty much basic setup. Um, you know, PFSense is set up. We'll go through some further options that you can do uh, in other videos. Um, I've had a few people mention: Is PFSense secure out of the box? Yes, it is. If we go into firewall rules, there's no rules defined on the interface for the one. Um, all incoming connections to the interface will be blocked until you specifically add a rule to allow it. On the one side of things, we have the anti-lockout rule to prevent you getting locked out of the web interface. Um, and the default is allow traffic on the LAN, whether it's IPv6 or IPv4. Um, I just you know, felt that was something we needed to do to finalize the other two videos on the APU2 to get it up and running, uh, which was mainly you know, enabling the hardware encryption, setting the date and time, changing the default username and password. Um, let's go back to status, dashboard. So as you can see, it's using you know, very little resources. It isn't doing particularly much at the moment. So I'll leave that there. I just figured we needed to um, wrap that up. So thanks for watching and I hope it's helpful to somebody.